My friends, we're having a Halloween sale going on a few days after the release of this podcast episode. Enter the coupon code SPOOKY at TheAnxietyGuy.com, any of the programs you want, to receive 30% off of that program for the next few days after the release of this podcast episode. Coupon code SPOOKY, TheAnxietyGuy.com. Pick your program. Start your healing journey. And today we're talking about self-control. How much self-control do you actually have? And no, self-control is not negative. It's not a negative thing. If you have an association towards it that is quite negative and you think about self-control in a negative way, you have to reframe that. You have to respond better to that because without self-control, you cannot have your own perspective. You cannot have your own beliefs. You cannot go through the day with your own genuine behaviors. You cannot become your own identity. You can't control many things in this lifetime. But there are some things that you can control on the inside, which will in fact affect everything that goes on on the outside. So stop trying to control everybody, every circumstance, situation, and look to start controlling things that you actually can control. We're going to talk about these today. And Understand that no self-control means that you are led, okay, but never lead where your emotional state and life is headed. So if you're not happy with your results, we have to start working on this right now. Be brutally honest with yourself in terms of what I'm about to share with you. Number one, sleep patterns. Sleep patterns go a long way towards self-control. Mainly the first 20 minutes upon waking up, the last 20 minutes prior to sleep, okay? And how much you sleep and the quality of your sleep is very, very important. So if you're doing these things correctly, you're waking up in the morning and you're not defaulting to your phone, okay? You're waking up and you're saying, okay, I'm going to start this day off by building a beautiful connection with my body, My body needs X. I need to build that relationship and show my body some self-love. I have to show these body parts some self-love. I have to do some kind of a physiological exercise and a mental exercise that shows my body that this world is a safe place to be in. If you're starting your day like that, okay, many times your entire day follows. It's like a domino effect. And prior to sleep, are you... Doom scrolling on social media? Don't expect to wake up refreshed if you are, right? Wasting your time, energy on focus, focusing on other people's lives, going on TikTok and watching some videos of people constantly being stimulated. No, you're just pushing the fight or flight response. You're just pushing the sympathetic response more and more within you. It's not good. So, When it comes to self-control, number one, sleep patterns, okay? What you do upon the first 20 minutes and last 20 minutes prior to sleeping. Number two is your diet. Know your deficiencies, okay, when it comes to your diet, which I believe can be understood not only through proper testing, but through intuition and a good food mood journal. That's right. A lot of people out there, Okay, they want to start a new diet. Uh, They want to start adding new foods to their diets, but they're not really keeping track of what their emotional states are after consuming those foods, supplements, whatever it may be. So a food mood journal is very, very important to keep track of how you are reacting to some of this new stuff. Okay, Um, how often do you eat? What do you eat? So diet plays a crucial role in your healing journey. Please don't think that just because you eat well for a few days, you're allowed to go back to those old junk food habits. No. Okay, because you will see by your amount of mental clarity, your ability to concentrate on things, and your ability to prolong inner peace will be dictated by your diet, your sleep patterns. Those two are very important. Very crucial to your self-control. Number three, stimulation slash temptation. (laughs) Oh, stimulation slash temptation. 
the dopamine-led lifestyle where temporary highs only bring you full circle back to the addiction to suffering must be recognized. You know, you're about to, you're about to do something, right? And you know deep in your heart that you're going to be placing a tremendous amount of energy and focus on it, and you're already depleted, right? Anxiety disorders deplete people mentally, emotionally, physically, spiritually. So you're about to do something here, and you know you're going to be depleted, but at some point it's become such a habit, right? And you find certain reasons that you say, you know what, I'll just do some meditation later on, right? And that'll balance everything out. No. Okay? I need you to pay attention to your stimulation levels. Okay? Even people, right? You're hanging out with somebody, and... Maybe not at a conscious level, but at an unconscious level, they are absolutely draining your batteries. Pay attention. Pay attention. Uh, Your work environment, right? Even the person that you sleep next to, maybe, right? You're the husband and you're sleeping next to your wife who's full of energy and all that sort of stuff. And throughout the night, of course, you're both communicating with each other at a subconscious level. Maybe you need to sleep on the couch for a few weeks. Okay, notice how different that feels. And then as you're working on your healing, gradually get back into the bedroom with him or her. These are things that we must pay attention to because energy is finite. Concentration is finite. This goes a long way towards self-control. Another one is present internal and external perceptions. Okay, how are you perceiving things in the present Okay, internally, in terms of symptoms and bodily reactions, and externally, in terms of people, places, and things. Okay, we need to make sure that we keep our perceptions in line. It's like a general taking care of their army. Okay, what happens if one of those soldiers starts doing things that go against the rules or the laws, right? Everybody else will start joining in. So you basically can't allow certain negative or angry or fear-based perceptions to overtake your belief systems. Okay, You have to stand guard at the doorway of your mind. And when your mind or body has a perception, you must override it in some way. That's called responding. You've learned that through my second book, F Coping, Start Healing, and Continue to utilize those techniques each and every day. As you're going through the day, you are always responding to your mind and you're always responding to your body in terms of feelings and you are guiding more so than you are being directed by, if that makes sense. Okay, this is an ongoing thing throughout the day and has a has a huge effect on self-control. Um as we mentioned, connections, who do you regularly connect with and how how do they have an effect on you and your emotional state and overall life experience? Pay attention. And what else can we control? We can control what our body does. We can control our physiology. Okay, I've mentioned this before, and this is my top three. Speed, posture, and breathing. These are three things that you can control as you go through the day, okay? Because... As I mentioned in previous podcast episodes, so many people out there are able to heal an anxiety disorder simply by slowing down their speed. It's absolutely amazing. And this is one of the go-tos that I go to with my clients. I ask them, while you're driving, how fast were you driving? Right? When you're talking to your wife, when you get home, how fast are you talking? Speed plays a major role in whether your perceptions are led towards threat or safety. Okay, this is at a physiological level. I'm not talking about a psychological level here, right? Posture. If you're sitting in front of a desk all day long and you look depressed, guess what? You're going to be depressed. You're going to feel depressed. You're going to perceive in a depressed way. Okay, you're going to come home at nighttime. You're not going to be excited. You're going to be drained. There's going to be no energy left in the tank. These are important things, okay? Breathing patterns, low and slow through the stomach area and diaphragm or fast and shallow through the chest. It has everything to do with perceptions, belief systems. So these three things, speed, 
posture, breathing can go a long way towards self-control. So more than anything in this podcast episode, this Halloween edition, hope you enjoyed it on YouTube. Comment below if you did, my friends. Hope you like the new setup. More than anything, I need you to pay more attention, okay? Pay more attention, pay more attention. You can't change anything until you bring conscious awareness to that thing that needs to change, okay? Because you're not going to change it at an unconscious level. Don't expect time or anybody else to heal what it is that needs to be healed, okay? Make sure you understand and remember that inner balance leads to healing, when you can sense that you've got some balance going on on the inside, okay? And you know what that means at an intuitive level, you are truly, truly healing. That is what I believe. That is what I've seen over and over again. And my friends, go for it, okay? Take the snippets, take the golden nuggets from this podcast episode, and use them in your healing journey. Love you all. Have a great day. Remember that you are more than anxiety. And don't forget to use the coupon code SPOOKY at theanxietyguy.com. Any of the programs, 30% off, coupon code SPOOKY. Start your healing today. Bye-bye, my friends. The most powerful anxiety guidebooks on true anxiety recovery are now available on Amazon. Pick up Beyond Anxiety and F Coping, start healing, and supercharge your healing journey today. Also visit www.theanxietyguy.com to connect with Dennis and find the right online program for you. Remember, you are more than anxiety. See you in the next podcast episode.